Right guys, so this is an alternative development. If you've seen drawn design development in the Borden and Beyond series, you will have seen me develop a black pen study. But if you watched a 5 minutes 41 on that video, you will see me develop this design. Now in this process, what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate aging the paper, collaging and then drawing on top of it. It's a little bit different from what we've done so far. Now, I would typically use watercolour. I find it's easy to control, I can mix a range of colours and so on. But I'm going to resort to the materials we have in our home. Now, if you have a teapot or, or um, tea bag, you might have an old tea bag that you can put, you can wet the paper and you can get it, a little bit of moisture in it, splodge it on. It can be a used tea bag, you do not need to use a new one. Or you can get some coffee. Now in my house, this is the only coffee I have. It's not a granule. It's kind of like, well, it is a granule, but it's kind of like a smooth, not a chunky one. So what you can do, first of all, is you can get a bit of water and pour it on. And I would suggest working in a kitchen or somewhere where you're allowed to work with wet materials. You do not want to be doing this anywhere near your surface. So I have decanted a little bit of the powder into a pot with a little bit of water. And now notice it's really thick. So it's like toffee. It's really viscous. Now I might want to work with something that flows. If I put that on here, it's going to be clumping. So I might want a little bit more flow. So I'm going to put a teeny bit more water in. Now the paper below has expanded. As the water is sat on it, it's uh, become sort of wrinkly as it's expanded so it will never be quite as flat as it was a few minutes ago before I did this. So now I've got a bit of a thicker paste and I'm going to put some onto the image. Now I've just put wet on wet. Did you see it run? I'll just move my camera a teeny bit because there is a light glare from my lamp. So you can see a very hard edge appearing here. You might wonder why it might not be cleared for you to see but it is from my point of view. But that bit is completely dry so if you just want some sort of aged like stains into it you can just sort of apply it with a brush you might say miss i don't have a brush at home equally fine so you might have to do something that's a bit looser now i'm going to decant a little bit of my coffee into the lid obviously check with your parents before you start raiding the kitchen and see how i'm just sprinkling some of the granules onto it let's see what effect this has can you see that effect so where the granules are, the colour is sort of running from it into the water and creating this new effect. This work stinks of coffee and I'm not a big coffee fan, so I don't particularly like the smell of it. Another reason why I prefer the watercolour. But I'm going to go and do a little bit of work into it in a more controlled way. So I've got different areas with different things going on. If I want it to be mega controlled, I'd have to let it completely dry so we stop having this run between areas. Well, it's a little bit drier down here, so I might be able to get a little bit more control. So you see, I'm just painting into it. I'm just going to do a little bit more. If you are impatient and live in a house with a hairdryer and you're allowed to use it, again, all this stuff you need to check with the grown-ups in your house that you are allowed to use them in case there's any safety implications. You don't just want to be doing something, as in school we're always thinking about your safety, you need to start thinking about it and check with whoever's supervising in the house, even if they're not with you at this moment in time. Because they don't necessarily know Miss Murphy is suddenly painting with their coffee. So, you see how I'm getting some controlled areas and some looser areas now? bit dry up here so I'm going in again with a bit more control. Now at this stage we just have to go with this we just have to commit to it and you might say but Murphy looks awful it doesn't look any good yet. Well this is the skill of the artist is we have to go through these stages sometimes where things don't look great and then we find ways to save them. It's my favourite bit. I'm absolutely convinced I don't think a picture's going very well if I've not gone through a place where things are going tricky and I have to find a solution. I think that's when it challenges me and my learning is at its height. Now remember this is the type of learning I like doing. 
despite it being coffee, I'm quite enjoying the painting with it and it's great to get off the surface for a little bit. So you see into here, I'm just building into it. So I might do some more on here or I might let it dry. This is not the final thing. We're going to add more things to it in a few minutes. So while we're waiting for this to dry, we're going to look at the work of an artist called John Piper. Now, this is another one of my British artists. And this piece of work is owned by Manchester Grammar School. It was on display in the staff common room and then in the art department. And now it is at large somewhere around the school. So if you've seen it, let me know where it is. I'd love to, to see it. Um, on here, we have an image of a church in front of which we have some strange sunflowers. They're kind of abstracted. They don't like Van Gogh sunflowers that are quite regular in a vase. This one especially is very loose, but it's almost like you're looking through these sunflowers at something behind. Now I'm going to propose that the artist has done something not dissimilar to Ed Clues, even though his work's a bit different. So if I put my cube in front of us again, maybe I'll zoom out so you can see the point I'm making. If we look at this face of the building, this face and we look at that that's the same plane it's the same face and he's darkened off that side and that side so the light is shining on this side and it's darker on this plane you can see it there and there and here and here now i'm also going to suggest that he's done like a drawing and then he's put some wash on it he may be done this as a print and then he's done some detailed drawing back into it let's zoom in a little bit more and you can see the kind of lines that we've got going on in here now. In fact, I'll point to them with a brush rather than my clunky finger. So if we see into there, very, very fine lines. You see a bit of wiggle to them, a bit of texture to them. Here, look, this one looks like it's just pencil. Whereas that one maybe looks like it's been drawn in a dip pen. So this is sort of like the process we're exploring at the moment. Now I'm going to zoom out a bit more. I'm going to pull up another artist. Let's put this and wait for this to dry. Put this out of the way and then we'll grab the next piece. The next piece is a physical piece of art in the frame in front of me. I'm going to zoom out. Now you can see some kind of UFO in the sky up here. This is the reflection of my drawing light. I've got it for drawing, not really for making videos, because when I'm drawing I need mega light these days. Now let's look at what we've got here. We've got a kind of overdrawing and it's it's of Manchester Town Hall. It's kind of a much wigglier style than the drawings we've looked at so far in the artists. But these sections are actually paper. Let's look at the evidence. I'm going to lift it up. I'm pulling it towards you. Do you see that torn edge there? There's also, if you can just see that, there's a fold in the paper down the centre. This is a torn piece of paper, like a telegraph pole. Well, that's a drawn one. And what our artist Jim Butler does is he goes out with a bag of scraps, like old bits of envelope. This looks very much like a section of envelope, different materials, different papers. And he starts sticking them down and then he draws over the top of them. So his drawing is done in the street. So it's kind of quite rapid, which explains some of its looseness because it's quite accurate. It's got a good perspective and things in it. But it's really got the handwriting and the authenticity of the artist. So if we look at Piper and we look at this artist, this guy has collage with an overdrawing on top. This guy has some kind of print or layers of paint with an overdrawing on top. So can you see there is a commonality to their process? So what we're doing is we are creating a base and then we're going to put an overdrawing on top if you choose to do this process. Now, I'm not really doing what Jim Butler was doing because if I was, I'd have a blank piece of paper and I'd be tearing papers out and sticking them down and then drawing on top. But my drawing is already on the paper and I've already got some marks and stains on it. So I want to put my collage on top of here. So I have picked out some papers. I have some graph paper. It's a bit, a bit bashed around, but that doesn't make any difference. I'm going to tear some graph paper off. Remember, I quite like the Jim Butler torn edge. But in here, if I pop it there... I lose my clock tower, I lose my arch. So I'm going to actually craft it in a little bit. Now you might say, but Murph, I don't have any tracing paper at home. Don't worry guys, you might have some baking parchment or baking paper. Again, you need to go and check with an adult, see if you've got any in the kitchen, that's where it would be. And you could just use that in the same way. Now I'm doing a light trace with a piece of tracing paper. 
around here and I'm thinking of putting my tracing paper in behind these little elements. I don't want it overlapping my three main features of the drawing. It doesn't matter how it overlaps that branch I've drawn in there based on Ed Clues. Just to be quite honest with you, I can redo that if I want to. So I'm now putting it on here and I want to cut it out and I want that section. I don't want the sections of the things I've done. I want that section. Now, how am I going to secure those things together? Well, I could. I've got a Pritt stick. Just add a little bit of glue. You could put a little bit of tape over the edge. I want, because you know what I'm like, I'm very regular in my style. I want to make sure that it's vertical. I don't like things at diagonals particularly. If any of you know about the work of Mondrian, he didn't like diagonals either. And he fell out with an artist called Dozen van Dozenberg over a diagonal. Sounds like a silly thing. But if you learn about it and you go on to study art, you probably know about these things. Now, I'm struggling because I've got all this excess tracing. So I'm cutting that off, making life as easy as possible for myself. And I'm just cutting around it. I'm obviously going to just hold it. I don't quite know what's going to happen yet. So I'm just testing bits. So I've done my little cuts. And maybe what happens at the edge of that mitre comes up to there. So I'm just testing where I want to cut. Now, even if I've managed to stick this onto there, if I pull it off, it should be okay. I didn't use a lot of glue. And if I pop it in, it might not be a perfect fit, guys, but it's not too bad. It will do the job for me. Now, I need to put some Pritt stick on it, but I need to do a fairly good job for this. Because I need my edges stuck down. It isn't one of those where you can just put a blob in the middle and hope for the best. And this Pritt stick is on its last legs. It's been in my drawer for a long time. I found it at the bottom because I'm running out of Pritt sticks at home. You see what I'm doing? I've got it on a piece of paper, obviously to save me cleaning everything up. Because I did this on the desk, it'd be everywhere. And I've done all round the edges. I've got a bit on the front as well, a bit messy. And I'm now going to carefully position it. Now, if it's not quite right, remember in both cases, our artist did an overdrawing and that's what we're going to do later. So that's stuck down. Now, where I've got dirty fingers and there's glue on top of it, I'm putting dirty marks on it. If I let that dry, that problem goes away. Now, what other materials do I have? Well, it'd be really cool if I had a map of Manchester, especially the Fallowfield area. And uh, I did some research around the school, but I don't because I'm at home and I'm in lockdown. But I do have this map and this is from it's actually a photocopy of a map from the war and one of our pupils a few years ago was using this and his i believe great uncle was a navigator and so these are copies of documents as it's a photocopy i feel able to cut it up and use it within my work and you might say well murph what has a map of the war got to do with mgs and you could just say i'm using it for texture but in this case there is a connection because there was a bomb that went off at the very periphery of the school field on Old Hall Lane. And if you actually look at the buildings, you can see a change in style in the buildings on Old Hall Lane. So when we get back to school, it might be something that you're interested in checking out. You might have no interest at all. That's equally fine. But if you are interested, check it out. Now, yet again, here I am with my tracing paper. You might say, but actually, I don't, I'm not too bothered about the tracing paper. I'm just going to stick some bits down. That's cool. Now, I'm tearing a piece off. You can hear me in the background, tearing a piece off. Turn a piece that's not too busy. I don't want too much stuff going on. Also, this time, I'm going to tear my tracing paper off. Because last time, it was a bit tricky, wasn't it, with a massive piece of tracing paper hanging and flopping around. So again, I'm going to position it. Do I want that interesting red bit or do I want a plain a bit? Plain a bit would be easy to match in, but hey, let's go for that because it's visually a bit more interesting. I like that kind of coastline or whatever that is there. So, here I go again, cutting out.
So I am working into negative space. Now, some of these pieces, like this bit, overlap other sections. See, I've given it a torn edge. If I tear it in a certain way, I can expose white paper. If I tear it the opposite way, I keep the top like so, where the tear is on the back. I've kind of lost a bit of my owl there. I'm going to tear a bit of that off. Now, what do I need to do next? I'm going to ask you, let you think for a moment. Yep, I need to stick it down. So how do I do that? Let's think about it for a moment. Piece of paper underneath. Dodgy print stick. Now, if you really don't have any glue, this is going to be pretty difficult for you. If you've got some tape, sellotape is not going to be your friend on this task because sellotape is very shiny. You can't draw over it later. So if you're struggling, you might just not add the additional materials, the collage. You might just stick with things you can actually work on the surface of and manipulate. I'm trying to work out where it goes and then position it. It's not quite in the right position there. If it tears, it doesn't matter too much. I can put the pieces down again. Here we go. And so on. And I can play this game for a while. I can keep adding more and more and more bits into it and building it up in a more interesting way. Now, if something stands out too much, there are ways in which you can push it back. I think what I'm saying there, push it back, kind of disguise it. So I happen to have some watercolours and I'm going to just use them. I'm just going to get a little bit of white. Because I'm using my coffee stained water, it looks a little bit yellow and coffee stained. Also got a little bit of that yellow contaminating it, but that's fine. What I can do is just need to dab it a bit more to suspend more of the white pigment in the water. And I'm just kind of trying to almost, I call it push it back. It kind of gets rid of it. It's standing out too much. It's dominating my image at this moment. But later when I put the things on, so I still want to be able to see it. Now, I do have some magazines to hand, I'm reaching across to grab one. It's a copy of Vogue from a few years ago, March 1999. So it's not particularly relevant in its text, but I, I might want some general text to collage in. So I'm going to find a page with some text on it. I have to go further back in this book. I'm going to just grab a bit. Oh, nice architectural drawing there. Now, do not be ripping up anyone's magazines in your house. Make sure you have checked with them. So again, this is not relevant in text terms to my image. However, I just want something that's going to provide a bit of visual interest. So notice what I'm doing. It's getting in a little bit of the text and in a plainish area, I'm popping in a bit of the text. Now you could still go back into it and work into it with your watercolours or your coffee tea mixes. So here I'm going back in and I'm, remember how I handled the bricks if you saw the full video for the last one. Now it's quite all right to be watching several of these videos and getting some ideas. You might actually go hybrid and come up with a kind of mixture of different things. Because I'm working on dry now, on a dry surface, see how much more control I have of the paintbrush. I'm getting much cleaner lines. Will it work over the top of the collage yes it will so what we're doing is we're discovering lots about materials now as an artist the more materials you know how to control and manipulate the more powerful you are as a linguist it's like learning lots of different languages and it's good for you believe me i think it's very good for you and i've always loved that bit of control of materials i love the bit of developing ideas and researching I love the bit about controlling materials and making something look really cool. See what I'm doing now? I'm, I'm freestyling, I'm painting with it. So I'm putting this little bit of definition into these areas. Right, I'm definitely not going to put that tree back in now. I might put this one in, but I'm not having that one. I've decided that's been going. So, start, starts to look interesting. I'll be back with you in a minute when it's dry and we're going to do some drawing onto it. Guys, my desk is driving me insane. It's an absolute mess. So if you now want to do the overdrawing in the style of Jim Butler or John Piper, 
you need to pick your weapon, your pen. So here I have a pencil. So on the most base level, you can use a pencil and think about the kind of marks you can get with a pencil. Here I'm drawing an even line. Here I'm altering the weight. If you had a black pencil crane, you get a slightly different mark again. I have a fine liner. I ignore all the other things on my piece of paper. So I can get a very even line or I can get these kind of dashed and broken lines. And the thing I'm doing at the moment is really valuable because I'm thinking about the properties of the materials and what pen would do right for me. That was a medium. This is a slightly thicker one. Now, if you watch the video, I use that one when I was doing my brick textures. Now, all of those were water-based and water-based has an interesting effect. I'm going to use the water that's out of my coffee pot. So I'm going to put water over the end. And if you can see what's happened, we have a run. So if you wet it after you've done it, you're going to get the line breaking down in some way. Now, this is where these other pens come in. This one, water and fade proof pigment. So if I just draw some lines with this, it's a mega fine. Look, it's a 0.1. I do a lot of work with these mega fines. Quite like them. My sight fails me a little bit though, so that's why I have to have this mega bright light on. And this one is a standard Sharpie. Now the issue I think with the Sharpie is, obviously it's permanent, but if that goes through and marks the table below, if you're working on thinner paper than me, you might be in a bit of trouble at home because it does go through. Now this one is a standard biro. Got it at an event in uh, Albert Square outside uh, Manchester Town Hall. It is a blue, but I can still get different weighted lines with it. And if that's all you've got, that's what you can use. Doesn't matter if it's got a bit of colour to it. Justify it. It's MGS blue, isn't it? So you can see these things. Let me just get my water again and go over my permanents. See how they're not moving. So I'm going to chuck this out of the way and I will probably look back to my reference material of MGS. It is a bit wet, this. So... I'm going to pick my fine liner and I'm going to start drawing the owl. I'm going to build up some marks and textures in it. Now, the owl bits is my favourite bit to draw, that's why I always come to it. Because I've drawn it several times, I can do it fairly rapidly now. Looking for lights and darks, but you will need to look at your reference material. It's a bit dark behind that ear. And I'm going to just pull up our John Piper image again. See how he has thin lines, remember, and he had some pencil lines coming through. So you don't necessarily need to do everything really heavy. If something goes wrong, don't be freaking out too much about it. What could you do? Let's think, what could you do? You don't have a teacher in the room to help you immediately. You could get your image on Teams and we could talk about it. But don't be worrying too much about it. There is always a way to fix something. Rarely can we think of a, a scrap something. We can't work out how to do this. So remember, I think you learn more from things going wrong than you do from things going right. So I'm building up my marks into here and I will continue drawing into the image. So you can see how this image is going to unfold in quite a different way to the previous one, which was the more graphic style. Right guys, so I'm doing a bit more into this drawing and the style is really developing and it's definitely got the characteristics of the artist John Piper. I'm going for a very broken line. If you remember those little samples I was doing a few minutes ago. In places I've made mistakes. Now, remember, I believe we learn more when we make the odd mistake and we can develop it and we can learn from it. So remember, don't be worrying. I can't emphasise this enough. A lot of you get yourself into real tears when you make a mistake. But don't worry, I've gone over my line a bit there. Now, confidence matters. Just remembered when I was looking at that a bit better last time, there was a little cross at the top of it, but I've missed it out. I don't think it matters too much for the purposes of this style. I'm having to look back at my reference material because I can't quite remember how to do this bit. Now, I was freestyling a bit there, guys, because I have drawn this now at least three times. So after a while, you become really familiar when I was doing my A-levels, we had to draw peppers cut in half, like the cross-section of a pepper. 
and I swear I could draw one in my sleep nowadays. They're still with me, the little cells on the inside of it, the surface, the way the light hits them, the way the seeds are. I could draw the whole thing. Challenge me sometime and I'll show you without reference material. Because it's all in my head. I'm wondering if I'm going to draw that window. I don't know. I'm just maybe going to come back to it. I'm going to draw the things I'm enjoying drawing. Now that pen looks a little bit thick on there. So I'm going to tidy up. Notice I'm tidying up now my original drawing. It's not nearly as detailed as the drawing I'm doing of the top. Now there are so many different ways we can develop these things and in the next video I'm going to show you one where we can do like a paper fold and then ultimately I'm going on to make a model and anything you learn from one of them you can take into another task and through this project you might do several of these things remember it's not just about doing it it's about what you're learning as you're doing it now I might not completely finish this because I think it demonstrates the point. So I might come back to it in a live lesson. But be cautious. If you're going to wet this, make sure you've got a decent brush because it will run around. If you find, like I've just been very cautious, you want to fill out a little bit of dark area, you need a bit more fill in it. You can do. I'm just doing a bit of a quick fill. Notice when I'm working on the wet bit, it doesn't take so well. It's running around a bit. So now I've done it in a very loose way there. I'll tell you what guys, it absolutely stinks of coffee in here. If you don't like the smell of coffee, use a tea bag. Or use your watercolour set, if you've got one. Remember, you don't need to buy fancy materials. You might be dropping out at the end of this year and you might not really need them. So just put a bit of pencil into there. Oh look, pencil, wet. I've got some thickish paper and I've got some pencil on it and it's wet. See, that's made quite a nice texture, quite like that. And I know there's a little window in there with the radial glasses, so I'm beginning to put that in. Oh, I've not drawn the steps on this one. Now, I've got the idea of doing the kind of pencil and pen from John Piper. Do you remember when I was looking at his work? So the purpose of looking at the artist's work now should hopefully be coming to you. That it isn't just to answer questions that your teachers asked you. It's to kind of give you ideas. And I know there's some windows. It's wider, the centre one. It's got two ones here. We've got those panels with the benefactors, the school. I might want to go with a little bit of water just to darken it off. That's not done very much. I'm going to take a bit of dark from up there. So can you see the development as it's coming along? Kind of a, a very different style from the previous. So I went on and I did quite a bit more work to this. Now, I've really layered materials up and that's what we're going to look at. So if we look at this graph paper section, See how the wash of the coffee and some later black watercolour paint that I've popped into it. You can see this kind of build up where I put washes on and then I put little bits of fine liner and drawing into it. And this brickwork was something I did near the end when it was kind of unifying it because the bricks and the little dotted lines, I've continued some of these little dotted lines in different places. And they kind of blend these different sections. So it isn't like one section has this feature and one section has another. The darkness, dotting the darkness around it, gives it some kind of pace and rhythm. Now, if we look at the John Piper, and one thing that I really went to look at quite closely was this texture into the background. And although different, you can see in my image the textures that appear in the background here. And I've done some spray, splattery spray bits up there as well. So it has texture about it. It also has some of the hallmarks of this work with the collaged paper and the overdrawing. And it's taken quite a long time to just sit and work into this to develop it. But 
This process can be used in both of the next construction stages. So don't think of it isolated purely to this task. Think about how this could be used within other work.